Mr. President, I'd like to address the issue before the Senate. It relates to the divisive and controversial issue of abortion. And it comes at an unusual moment in the history of the United States Congress. This week, for the first time, the Pope will be addressing a joint session of Congress. It was 50 years ago when the first Pope visited the United States, and the arrival of Pope Francis this week is a cause of great celebration. Uh, people from my state of Illinois and across this nation because of their respect for his leadership of the Catholic Church. It calls to question, of course, the relationship between religion and our government. This summer I finished a book called Mayflower, which told the story of the pilgrims coming to the United States, settling in in our country, looking for a new opportunity, but looking more than anything for freedom of religious belief. They were followed by scores and thousands of others who came for the same reason. My mother was an immigrant to this country, brought here at the age of two. Her mother brought her and her sister and brother to our shores for a variety of reasons, but there's one thing that sticks out in that journey. Up in my office, I have something that my grandmother carried across the ocean from Lithuania to the United States. It was a Roman Catholic prayer book written in Lithuanian. It was contraband in 1911 in, in Lithuania for her to possess it because the Russians were in control and the Russians were imposing the Orthodox religion and making it difficult to practice the Catholic religion. I never knew my grandmother, but she was one brave lady to bring three kids across the ocean and to stick in her bag that prayer book that meant so much to her that prayer book which she could use in the United States of America without the government telling her she couldn't. We have tried to strike the right balance between religion and our democracy from the beginning. And our founding fathers, I believe, got it right. They said three things in the Constitution about religion, that each of us would have the freedom to worship as we choose or to choose not to worship. Secondly, that the government would not choose a religion that we would not have an official government religion. And third, there would be no religious test for public office in America. I thought those were settled principles, but this presidential campaign suggests otherwise. We had the outrageous suggestion by a Republican presidential candidate this last weekend that a Muslim should never serve as president of the United States. I would think that a man of his background and learning would at least take the time to understand our Constitution and the express provision which says that he is wrong. There will never be a religious litmus test to serve in public office in the United States.